I'm Stacey Harvey Brown and I'm a weaver and I'd like to introduce you to a loom that was the precursor of the computer age. This loom is 12 feet tall and it's two and a half tons, cast iron. This one was made in Yorkshire in England in we think the 1930s and uh, was a power loom, in working loom, in Galashiels in Scotland. Now the story of how Hattie came to be here is a tale that I tell to maths and science and textiles groups all around the world. And so I won't go into that now, but I'm just going to take you around to the back of the loom so that you can see how this loom came into the computer age. We're now at the back of the loom and what we're looking at here are the binary cards and basically it's a simple binary system just like any computer works it's on or off it's yes or no now this is a very simple system and it all relates to the head the jacquard head mechanism up on the top of the loom The rods that you've just had a look at on the film are basically interconnecting with these cards and when a rod goes through the card it says yes I want to be lifted and it gets caught there's a hook that's attached to that rod and it gets lifted over a knife which is called a griff and it lifts it up and raises the threads that you might see in the background here on the loom being raised. If it gets stuck against the card, at the blank of the card, that's basically pushing the rod out of the way of the knives so that it can't be lifted. So a hole is yes, I want to be lifted, and a blank is no, I don't. The early forms of writing information for this loom were on a mise en carte, which is the French word, uh, because the loom was developed in France, and this is what it looks like. This is a 1953 um, pattern designed for ties from Macclesfield Silk Museum. And basically, I work with Macclesfield Silk Museum on occasion, and I'm going to be turning this into a set of cards that can then weave this particular design. This was for a tie design, but it'll, uh, when I weave it on this loom, it'll be a much bigger design. It'll be six inches wide, so it'll turn itself into a picture and be a different format. So I'll now take you across to the card cutting machine where I translate that information into the binary cards. So how do we get the information from the mise en carte onto the cards? That's where the card cutter comes in handy. And this is called a piano card cutter because it's got eight knobs at the back and I suppose because there's an octave on the piano. That's the only way I can think that it's called a piano card cutter. But here you can see my design paper, mise en carte, of the flower. And this is how I actually convert the information on here to the information on here. There are 384 hooks in the jacquard head on Hattie. So I have to cut 384 holes or, or blanks on the card to give the information that the loom needs. And the way of doing that is first of all, to create some lace holes and positioning holes, otherwise the loom, the card doesn't sit on the loom in the right place to be able to give information. So then I go along the design paper here which is divided into grids of eight squares and the eight squares relate to the eight buttons on the back and any square that's blacked out I cut. So in my first one here there's only one where I don't cut, so I'm putting all those down that require cutting. And the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And then the next one starts the design of the poppy. So I'm putting down one, two on this, finger, on this hand, and two on here. And I'll do that all the way across, just cutting the black squares all the way across. And each one of these represents the passage of the weft yarn from one side of the loom to the other. 
Now we've got the cards, we need to keep them in order. They have to be numbered on the sides of the cards. There are numbers all the way through. This one I think has 364 cards to make up that single flower that you saw. So each one of those has to be cut, then numbered sequentially, then laced together in order. And I now have a lacing machine to do this, but I used to have to do it by hand, which is quite laborious. And then you go up onto the loom and you connect the two ends of your long, long line of cards so that it becomes one continuous circle, giving its instructions to the loom. Here we go. She's quite slow compared to modern standards. She runs at about 90 picks a minute, which is 90 shots of the weft yarn a minute. Modern rapier looms are more like 600, 5 600 a minute. So she's slow. She's an old workhorse. She's really good. I think she's wonderful. She's living history and there's life of the old girl yet. <laughs> 